Hello everyone, I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. Coming up, I've got all the info for the Hyperborean Kickstarter, and a Hyperborean module review, Forgotten Fane of the Coiled Goddess, coming right up on RPG Retro Reviews. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who this is your first time here, I'm Captain Courageous and the things I discuss are classic Dungeons and Dragons modules, adventures, and games related to the OSR or Old School Revival. My personal favorite of these various systems that tend to emulate the style of play and rules of Old School D&D is a game now referred to as Hyperborea, formerly Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. The Kickstarter for this awesome game is now live and a link for it is in the description. Please watch the video all the way through to the end as I have details on this awesome Kickstarter. I sort of feel we are in what I would call the fourth wave of the OSR and its popularity and there is a renaissance of high quality supplements, modules and games from a variety of amazingly talented creators and it's the goal of this channel to direct you to the cream of the crop. If you are a fan of gritty pulp fantasy heroes such as Conan the Barbarian, Call the Conqueror, Favard and the Grey Mauser, Tarzan the Ape Man, John Connor of Mars, Elric of Melibone, and the Hyperborean Cycle by Clark Ashton Smith, then you might have a pretty good idea of what this game is about. But I've already done an in-depth review of this OSR game where I went over how amazing and innovative the campaign setting of Hyperborea is. It's just so wonderfully weird in its peculiar orange sun and wonky long year seasons of winter and summer. It is a springboard for imagination and fantasy adventure. Forgotten Fane of the Coil Goddess written by Joseph D. Salvador isn't just an adventure module but is part campaign supplement as well as it goes into detail on the Lamarian Remnant, a section of the world of Hyperborea. One of the neat things about many of the modules for this game is they tend to have a bit of setting information for the areas explored within, making them extremely conducive to long-term campaign play. The Lamarian Remnant itself is a spatial anomaly appearing to take up only an area of about 24 miles across. However, once ships pass through the surrounding tempests and winds to enter Lemarian waters, they find themselves in a region 180 miles wide. This is a hexagonal region similar to Greater Hyperborea, and indeed, just like the main setting, there are rune-covered structures at each of the six corners, 55 feet aside, 350 feet high, with intricately carved guardian demons, part lion, part serpentine, part dragon, Men of Learning have drawn diverse conclusions about the similarities between these pedestals and the great obelisks that surround all of Hyperborea. Within this region is a large mainland surrounded by a number of small keys, the entire thing sitting on the very edge of the world. The land is characterized by geothermic activity and a subtropical climate. There is quite a bit of detail on the flora and fauna of the region, the kinds of people that can be found there, the prevalence of silk as a trade good, and the cults and religions of the island. Joseph Salvador's degree in Asian studies is on full display here as he infuses the Lamaria remnant with culture and fantasy legends from the Far East, further adding to the exotic and colorful aspects of the setting. Using this supplemental material, the referee will be able to run many adventures well after the adventure possibilities described within are exhausted. The layout and organization of the module is top-notch. The editing is clean and professional. The type large and easy to read. As is typical for old-style modules of this type, there were a variety of rumors, both false and true, presented about the main island, pirates and a group of missing settlers to the Isle of the Serpent, an island that is said to be uninhabited. And now we're getting into 
all her territory, so if you plan on playing this module, you may want to stop now. Or if you're a player in my Hyperborean campaign, stop watching right now. <laughs> if you are familiar with the classic Dungeons & Dragons module, The Isle of Dread, The Isle of the Serpent shares many similarities in both structure and tone, and Salvador's fondness for that classic adventure is quite evident. There are a variety of story seeds that might lead the characters to come to the island, and once there, they can begin its exploration, and that can lead to any number of adventures depending on the whims of the players and the referee's imagination. Being sold a treasure map that leads to the Isle of the Serpent and the invaluable feathered crown of Nanasa is one possibility that can lead the heroes to want to come to this place. Another is a group of missing settlers came to the island and the heroes are hired by relatives to find them. They could also be hired by the merchants of Jaman Ket to locate the outpost of pirates that have been raiding shipping lanes in the area or simply have the heroes on a sea voyage and they end up shipwrecked on the island. Ultimately, however, all roads lead to the pyramid in the center of the island and it is the primary focus of the module. Kang Som is a monk formerly of the Zone Monastery. He heard the tales of the Princess Nanasa and her treasured feathered crown and became obsessed with seeking out the secrets of the god Yig. Yig is a serpentine deity said to take the form of a giant python who resides deep in the many tunnels of Underborea, a deity that is said to grant his followers forbidden secrets and the ability to shed their skin to take on serpent forms. The troublesome, power-hungry monk was soon expelled from the monastery. For a while, Kang was a pirate and in control of a band of reavers. Kang discovered that feathered crown and took it to the Isle of the Serpent. There, in the bowels of a ruined temple, he also found Nanasa, who had become a primordial naga, slumbering upon her jade throne. Kang performed an antediluvian ritual, and after placing the magical crown upon the naga's head, awakened her from her ageless slumber. So it came to be that Nanasa and Kang reestablished the ancient temple as a monastery. Snake men have come to the island to help with the effort and secretly reside within. The young group of settlers to the island have been tricked into settling at the temple and serving the needs of the Naga after their leader, Mo Gen, was murdered and replaced with an altered snake man duplicate. Such is the situation at the monastery when the heroes arrive at the Isle of the Serpent. As I said, the author Joseph Salvador took a lot of inspiration from the original Isle of Dread, and as such, there is an island hex map, and then a blank player's map, so that the players can document what they find as they explore. There are wandering monsters of all types, including dinosaurs, giant snakes and insects, and a variety of traps and hazards that have been set by the island's monkey men inhabitants. Of course, ultimately the pyramid is discovered and the site-based aspects of the module can begin. There are several ways into the temple, posing as villagers, temple priests, but if characters are fastidious in their explorations, they can discover a back entrance into the place. Here they can uncover the strange lost technology of the serpent men and their bizarre experiments on the local populace and animals within the innards of the pyramid revealing the strange rites and practices of the serpentine cult. There are several set-piece encounters, of course, that with the troublesome monk Kang Som, the experimental room where crazed monkey men whose form has been morphed to include octopus-like tentacles, and of course the boss of the place herself, Nanasa, the primordial naga. The forgotten fane of the coiled goddess contains enough material to last for many game sessions, and due to the detailed setting material well beyond the scope of the module's primary adventure. The front cover art is wonderfully evocative. The inks are by Val Semeckis and the colors by Daisy Bingham. The back cover illustrations is by Jonathan Bingham, also inked by Daisy Bingham. The interior illustrations are by Jonathan Bingham. Joseph Salvador and Del Tegler 
as well as all the Hyperborean modules, the interior is lushly illustrated with some dynamic set pieces that wonderfully encapsulate the serpentine decor of the Temple Pyramid. Getting a copy of this module is easy as it's still available at Northwind Games website for just $22. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Forgotten Fane of the Coiled Goddess on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. As with all of the Hyperborean modules, the Kamiki old school artwork evokes that classic pulp fantasy feel. From the colorful cover art to the atmospheric interior illustrations, the choices as to what scenes in the module to illustrate are on point. The maps, and there are quite a few of them, are minimalist but detailed enough to be interesting. The wilderness hex crawl to an exciting site-based exploration pyramid is wonderfully Robert E. Howard-esque, but the lost world feel of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is very present here as well. I also appreciate the inspiration of the Isle of Dread, and it is still its own unique thing and not too derivative. Now I'll go ahead and rate this an 18. The presentation for the module is extremely professional. I wasn't able to find any spelling errors or blatant mistakes. The organization is top notch, and this is an easy to manage adventure for the referee. The detailed setting information takes up the first 10 pages of this 54 page module and very much makes this part supplement. The way the Lamarian remnant is done with its hex shape and mysterious spatial distorting obelisks, you could really place it into any campaign setting. The old school statistics are completely compatible with other systems like Osric or Swords and Wizardry or even old school essentials. So you don't even have to be running a Hyperborean campaign to make great use of the material here. You could literally drop it in anywhere in your campaign world's oceans. Now I'll go ahead and give this an amazing rating of 19. The value of the module I have to rate very high. The cover is nice, heavy cardstock, and the pages are thick. This is something you're probably going to run for many groups over the years. The 10 page supplemental material on the Lamarian Remnant means that the referee will probably be able to find inspiration for other adventures well beyond the scope of the module itself. At $22, this 54 page adventure is certainly worth the price of admission. If you're a fan of the source material that inspired this adventure, you're going to enjoy this module. I'll rate this a solid 18. That brings the overall rating of the Lost Fane of the Coiled Goddess to an 18. Very good. So let's talk about Jeff Talanian's Hyperborean Kickstarter for a moment. It began on July 1st and was funded in 17 minutes. And as of the release of this video, the $20,000 needed to be fully funded, which means that that's going to be a lot of sweet, sweet stretch goals to take advantage of. If you lamented not getting in on the previous Kickstarter and by the time you learned about this great game it was sold out, here is your chance. This is a third edition. There are some minor rules changes and of course more stuff. More classes, more spells, and more magic items. One thing that I'm happy to see is that the game is now divided up into two books rather than just one. I love the content of that massive 600 page tome, but it was a beast to hold in your lap for any length of time. Also, the map of Hyperborea is now condensed into an atlas booklet. This will make things much easier. The massive poster of the world was nice, but I felt that due to the hex shape of the setting, the poster was mostly black and some of the regions were too small to be as views. This is going to be much easier to reference in actual play. There's new cover art and a new introductory adventure module, The Late Trapper's Lament. Keep an eye on my channel and I also have an interview with the creator Jeffrey Talanian himself uh, coming in about mid-July. And that about wraps up this video for you this week. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found it fun and useful and informative. As usual, I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons. Without you, this content would not be possible. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and click the little bell so you'll get updates when I add new content. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Please check out my Teespring store for some great gaming swag, 
t-shirts, carry bags, coffee cups, and more. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron yourself. Or alternatively, you can just leave a tip in the PayPal tip jar. Link is in the description. And as always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on.